Well, Canadian astronaut Jeremy Hansen will make history next year when he circles the moon as part of the Artemis II mission. Hansen is in the capital today to discuss the mission after NASA delayed the highly anticipated trip until at least September of 2025. Hansen joins us now live from the Delta City Center where he's going to speak to a group of students and a few other professionals this afternoon. Jeremy, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, it's, let's talk about this. It's been a few weeks now since NASA delayed uh, your mission to the moon. Give us your reaction. I know that you've said, I, I was watching some of your reaction to, it makes sense for you uh, and your crew going from the fall to next September. It really does. Felt like the right decision. We are looking at all of the data with the, with the team. We've learned some things. We've identified some extra testing we want to do. And from our point of view, this is just standard risk mitigation. Uh, when, you, when you identify something, you're like, you know what, we better look into this. And you identify what you can do to buy down that risk. It's the right decision to do it. Sometimes it's really hard for leadership to delay a mission like that. And so I'm just really proud of our senior leaders for having the courage to, to delay the mission and just do it right. It, it's a reminder, right? It's space. It, it's not like, you know, you can, you know, something goes wrong. You don't have many options. And so you want to be as prepared as possible, right? That's right. I and mean, it's not that we'll be able to mitigate all the risks. The risk is never going to be zero. We're, we are going to take some pretty significant risks on this mission. And it is possible. You can have a loss of crew. That's a very real aspect of space exploration. However, it's also not like driving a car where you have a problem, you just pull over to the side of the road. And so we have to be smart about the risks we, we accept and uh, how we mitigate them. I feel I just feel such great confidence of how the team is approaching all of this and uh, makes me feel really good about the mission overall. I want to ask you, too, how training is going. Uh, clearly, you know, I, there's lots of it that happens, uh, I'm sure, almost every single day and the teams that are around you. How have things been going here in the last little bit? I'm having the time of my life. Uh, Jenny Gibbons, she's um, the backup for Canada on this mission. If for some reason I couldn't go on the mission, we've been training together a lot, the entire crew. Things like uh, in the simulator where we work with mission control. So, you know, before we go to space and fly these nine days with the vehicle, we, have, we will have flown at numerous times on the ground both for nominal flight plans, but also for off nominal and emergency situations. And so all of that is starting to come together. We've got another really neat training exercise coming up at the end of February where we'll actually go out to the Pacific Ocean and we'll be in a capsule that's floating in the ocean as if we've just landed from space. And we're gonna go through the whole exercise with the US Navy coming out pulling us out of the capsule, getting us in a helicopter, and then flying us to the ship. And so that'll be a really great exercise. So lots of stuff going on. Very, very cool. Again, that sounds like it's, there's a lot of preparation clearly that goes into this. Uh, for you, you know, has it, is it dawning on you, the more people that you talk to, you know, you're going to talk to some kids today, finally getting a chance to be able to go to the moon. It's been, again, delayed a little bit, but being able to be on that flight, what it means to you and what it means to Canadians? Uh, I just I love this opportunity to reflect back to Canada. It's amazing. We'll be the second country in the world to send a human into deep space. Canada. That's incredible. <laughs> and uh, we shouldn't be surprised, but yet somehow it is surprising. I think we often underestimate ourselves, but the reality is when you look at it, we have we ha we fought our way here over decades, you know, you go all the way back to the 1960s, setting bold goals for Canada with respect to space. We have a very competent space industry in Canada. We bring real value to the world stage. Our international partners want them on, want us on our, on their space team, sorry. And uh, that's a real compliment to the country and to the thousands of people who have worked over decades to make this possible. I'm super proud of Canada. And at the same time, it needs to be a constant reminder that you have to keep setting bold goals. You need to be visionary to stay in the space race like we are today. It's very true. I know you're going to talk to some group, uh, some grade five and six students. Is that going to be your message to them? Uh, you know, setting big goals, setting those in, and, you know, in, the, in those dreams among the stars? I'm going to share with them that uh, I was inspired by space at an early age and I did something that I was probably not intentional, but I told other people that I wanted to be a space explorer. And so setting a goal, sharing it with others, that's how you achieve something. You don't do anything of significance by yourself. You need a team. So if you want to do something in life, you need to share it with other people and they're going to help you achieve it. And so that's what I'll be sharing with youth, youth today. And the same goes for the country. We, you know, we expect the space economy in the world to triple between now and 2040. That's mm. really significant opportunity. So for a country like Canada, you know, the time is ripe to really be visionary and to go after this.
tripling in just a few years. It is going to be remarkable. It is great to catch up with you, Jeremy Hansen. Thank you for this. Uh, enjoy your time in Ottawa, okay? My pleasure. Thank you. Take care.